three, two, one. You ready? You're listening to the Real Pineapple Podcast Network. everybody thank you so much for listening this is the real pineapple and this is your humble host hunter we are back it's i know it's been a few weeks i've got a a lot of movies i've been watching a lot of reviews coming your way so i apologize for the radio silence but we are back and we will be in a much better rhythm moving forward it's been a so some transparency uh because i always say i'm gonna be i'm gonna keep it real with y'all so uh, my, uh, I, I, I'm gonna still call him a friend, but to be honest, I don't know if he'll ever talk to me again, but my former roommate who I'd been rooming with for four years, um, I asked him to move out. I gave him almost 90 days. I asked him to move out because, uh, I've been with my partner for four years uh, and, and I was just like, you know, it's time for us to live together, you know, make sure this is both what we want, build our lives together. And so there, to, to be very transparent with all of y'all, it, it, there was a very just awkward, uncomfortable vibe uh, here uh, here in the house, uh, here at Real Pineapple Headquarters. I uh, I was really frustrated. I was really sad. Um, I was really depressed, to, to, to be honest. So I just kind of was like, you know what, uh, until he he's moved out. Um, you know, I, I just really didn't feel like an, I was in a spot to provide the best content, uh, to y'all that you deserve, but he's moved out. I'm going to have, I'm going to be in this house for the next, uh, five weeks or so all by myself, me and Mr. Captain, and then my partner moves in, uh, to start February. So I am horribly excited for that. Um, I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed and I'm very honored that, uh, all of you are listening. So Got a review for one of my most, okay, let me stop lying, my most anticipated film of the year in Spider-Man No Way Home. Oh my god, I can't believe that I've seen this movie, and so, because of what this movie is, and how important this movie is, and how much is just going on with this movie, I'm going to go ahead and stay uh, spoiler-free up to a certain point. I'm going to be very vague and I'll give my grade at that point. And then if you want to know more about certain uh, moments I enjoyed and where I think we're going to be going as far as what pieces have been set up, then you can go ahead and uh, keep listening. So let me just jump in here. So Tom Holland, as you know, Peter Parker, our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, he is back in the starring role. This movie takes uh, place and picks up immediately, like minutes after uh, Far From Home, in which, of course, the ending of that being that Mysterio uh, had to be the biggest asshole ever and tell everyone, hey, Peter Parker is is Spider-Man. And so the Daily Bugle, which I love that they are turning, they've turned the Daily Bugle into just like info, like the MCU's info wars, like down to the same font. Like they are clearly mocking Alex Jones and I... I'm I'm all here for that. Uh, fuck Alex Jones, by the way. But but I love how they're just mocking him. But the movie picks up immediately after Far From Home, and so Peter goes ahead and he's web swinging. He sees his his face on the giant you know screens in Times Square, uh, showing uh, it's saying Spider Man Public Enemy Number One, which is a great callback to Steve Ditko, which I just thought was Mwah, that's wonderful. And so the movie starting off really deals with the fallout of Far From Home, and I love that because we have to kind of soak in the consequences of what Mysterio did. To Peter and here's something I'm going to give Marvel and Sony a lot of credit for. Uh, Marvel <coughs> went ahead and adapted. Let's call it what it is. One of the promising and the most disappointing comic book runs they've ever done, or comic events they've ever done in Civil War. If you have not read Civil War, 
it, it's it's a bad run. It, it's a bad run because it starts off so well, it just crumbles by the end. Uh, especially the way they have Captain America lose, which I just fucking hate because he shouldn't have lost. But I digress. Marvel is really kind of getting into this almost this place where they're going. Let's see how hard we can make it on ourselves. <laughs> like, how much resistance can we add? Uh, you know, to see if we can make this work. And Far From Home, or, or um, not Far From Home, but Civil War, is a perfect example of that. Um, I I love it. I absolutely love how how it immediately picks that up. And Civil War is a better film than the source material is. Like, well, let's just get that out of the way. It, it's a much better. A uh, well-told story in the film than in the comic, and talking to my partner, talking to other people, and I and I kind of tweeted about it and posted about it on my Facebook. I was saying the more I'm seeing of No Way Home and the more trailer stuff and TV spots, the more I'm sitting here going, "This is reminding me a lot of One More Day." Which, if you've heard me talk about Spider Man, you know how much I hate Spider Man. One More Day. It is it is one of the worst things that's ever happened. Spider Man. The only reason why that weirdly ends up being a good thing weirdly is because we get miles morales from the fact that everyone was kind of over peter parker at that point because of how shittily written he was and there's a shocking amount of elements from one more day that they incorporate in no way home and i'm sitting there and i'm sitting in the theater because i saw this luckily i was able to see it with uh uh frank daniel uh friend jesse love you both by the way and uh and my partner and I'm sitting there watching it, I'm going, okay, you're taking some swings here because of the source material that you're kind of, you know, pulling from. And yet, I'm not f- losing my shit like I was when I was reading One More Day, thinking, what are you guys doing? It's so weird how Marvel has just kind of hit this rhythm where, you know, you you'll like you may like certain things more more often than not, but their floor is usually good. And that's what's kind of insane with these multi-arc big event stories that they're taking on. Because this film should not work. For the amount of spinning plates that it has, this could have fallen apart at any time. And yet, it doesn't somehow. Which, again, is so weirdly impressive to me. But Holland, uh, Holland's Peter Parker, he goes ahead and basically kind of goes into hiding because he's getting people throwing bricks through his window. He's getting, you know, like uh, one of the things that really creeped me out, and I mean this as a compliment, is when the film first starts off and Zendaya, you know, she's a, you know, she's a teenager in this movie and, you know, Peter's a teenager in this movie. And the way that people are grabbing at his mask and trying to grab at uh, at MJ, it's fucking terrifying, and it just shows you how incredibly shitty uh, adults can be, and just people in general. And I really, actually appreciate seeing that that kind of darkness to this because, yeah, you kind of need to see how hard this hits Peter. And uh, the FBI ends up going ahead and calling his, uh, calling Aunt May, and calling Ned in, and they're. You know, they're going, well, what kind of, you know, what kind of friends are you if you're associating with him? And it's it's a whole thing. And one of my few complaints that I will throw against this movie is that we, of course, know from watching Far, uh, Far From Home is that the drones were Stark tech. And so there's a whole uh, investigation in the Stark Industries uh, in which they flash back to uh, <laughs> they flash back to Happy Hogan having the long hair. It's a great call back to Iron Man three. Uh, I it, it made me very happy, but there's really no wrap up on what happened to Stark Industries. I feel like that's being done for a reason because most of the time Marvel does you know go back to that shit. But given the context of how important the investigation is, I really do wish they would have just kind of wrapped that up or at least given me a little more as far as what's going on with Stark. But I digress. So as, of course, we know from the trailer, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch is back to, is back at do- uh, is back, good grief, as Dr. Stephen Strange. And so Peter ends up going to the Santorum and asks him, hey, man, like, and I and I and I do appreciate the fact that 
it's kind of the college acceptance letters. It's the uh, the letters or the lack of acceptance to MIT from Ned, MJ, and him. That's kind of his trigger into going, fuck, I need to change things. And I don't know, man, that, that just hit me in a spot that I went, wow, to, to be denied going to MIT because of something that Peter didn't even do is just showing those consequences. It really breaks your heart for Peter and his inner circle. And Peter is just, you just feel everything mounting on Peter. You feel the depression, you feel his sadness. And it really just makes you want to give the poor kid a hug because he's just, he's just going through it. But I really appreciate the fact he's going through it in the way that they show how he's just trying to manage and trying to make things work. And so when he's talking to Dr. Strange, you know, he tells him like, okay, like, let's go ahead and do the spell. And it's funny because the spell, Peter immediately, and this is where for me, it takes that, it, it's a big middle finger to one more day, because of course, as we know, Peter goes ahead, makes a deal with the, the literal devil of the MCU in Mephesto, in Mephesto uh, when Aunt May gets uh, fatally shot. But then, of course, you know, the consequence being that, oh, man, no one remembers, you know, like he loses all of his relationships with uh, with Aunt May, uh, not Aunt May, but with uh, Mary Jane and other characters. And it completely fucks Peter's life up and and him and MJ aren't together. It's a whole thing. And I appreciate the fact that Peter as he's kind of talking to Strange, realizes, oh, fuck, this is a bad idea, because he goes, well, wait, uh, Ned won't remember uh, that I'm Spider-Man. Oh, shit, MJ won't remember everything we've gone through. Oh, fuck, Aunt May. Like, she should probably know. And you you see just the growing concern as he's kind of talking himself through it. And it really makes it, it's, it's very tragic when the spell goes wrong, because you realize, oh, fuck, kid, you've, you've royally fucked up here and it's one of those things where you go oh no what did you do and of course we know what he did is bring in villains from uh from not just the amazing spider-man films but from the the raimi spider-man films because we get doc ock once again played by uh Oh my gosh, why am I blanking on his name? Alfred Molina. And then, of course, we get Willem Dafoe back as Norman Osborn, which, holy shit, Willem Dafoe back in the saddle as the Green Goblin. Are you kidding me? In 2021, who would have thought? Um, we, of course, get Thomas Hayden Church back, uh, as well as Sandman, Jamie Foxx back as Electro, uh, uh, aka Max Dillon. Um, I- I'm blanking on who played. Uh, uh, the the lizard, and amazing Spider Man. I I uh, I can picture him too, and I cannot remember his name. Oh crap! I why can't I remember? Oh, oh Reese Ivins. There we go. Um, but it brings in all these characters, and so it really becomes a movie of oh shit, how do we get these villains back to their worlds? And what I love about this setup is that it allows for the film to enhance the other films. It actually makes the Amazing Spider-Man films, I don't want to say required viewing, but you might actually enjoy this film if you go back and watch the others. So I didn't watch every single Spider-Man film. I did go back and watch uh, Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, and I watched Amazing Spider-Man. I was not about to watch Amazing Spider-Man 2, because if you've heard our review of that, which if you haven't, it is on the channel. You should check it out. I fucking hate the Amazing Spider-Man t- Man 2. It really angers me. It just makes my blood boil. So I wasn't about to rewatch that. But here's what I'll say about this movie. The way that Peter interacts with the villains, especially uh, uh, Doc Ock, uh, early on in the film... You see in the trailer, they tease that whole uh, freeway fight. And that freeway fight is fucking wonderful. There, There's Peter having to save someone uh, or a couple people, including Peter fighting Doc Ock with the nanotech, uh, with the uh, uh, the, the uh, Scarlet Spider or the MCU's version of the, uh, the Iron Spider. Pardon me. Uh, I, I love this. I love that fight so much. It's it's engaging the way the camera's sweeping around. It's fucking wonderful. There's a couple close calls where Peter really does need to use his athleticism, especially when Doc Ock starts, starts throwing tubes at uh, th- those these like freeway tubes at him. It's really intense. And I just overall was sitting there going, 
damn, I am just loving this so much. And I will tell people, um, that was some of the most engaging stuff for me personally. I really was sitting there watching it going, you know, not only am I loving this, but I'm I'm sad because I know this is going to end at some point. <laughs> that was that was probably my biggest uh, uh, like my biggest point of sadness for this is because the more I was watching this, the more fun I was having, the more I was just sitting there going, yeah, I love everything that you guys are doing. And so what I love about this movie or one of the several things I love about this movie without getting the spoilers is that I love how in um, in uh, in Spider-Man 2. I'm not a fan of Spider-Man 2. I think it's an okay Spider-Man film. I know a lot of people are like, it's the best Spider-Man live action film. It's not. Um, a couple reasons why Doc Ock's plan as far as with the Trinium and stealing money to get the Trinium instead of just stealing the Trinium, it's, it's essentially Mr. Freeze's plot from Batman and Robin, and it's just as stupid there as it is in Spider-Man 2. The lack of him even flashing back to think about his wife, he has one scene where he grieves and he's just like, yep, whatever. Even with the whole, uh, the, the bit in his neck, you know, controlling his mind, he has multiple points where he pushes back. He never talks about his wife again. It's like, all right, that's fucking shitty. That, there's just a couple reasons, but this really feels like a redemption for uh, Octavius in the sense that he really does get to be a scientist and we get to see him be a scientist independent of that fucking su giant sun machine, which I was very happy to see, to be honest. Uh, I, I love that. Defoe's Norman Osborn, it's not a spoiler to say that, you know, he goes bad because of course he does. And I will say without getting too much in the spoilers, at least for this portion of the review, his his performance is so incredibly fucking haunting. It's amazing how after this long, he's able to slide right back into playing Norman and just be this incredible bastard who, no matter which Peter it is across whatever multiverse, he's out to cause mayhem, destruction, and pain for Peter Parker. And it's just so beautifully tragic to see that even though he has no connection at all to the Peter Parker in this, in this, uh, you know, on this, uh, universe, how he's still out to cause pain. Uh, Jamie Foxx for the most part works for me. There are just a couple jokes that he gets that I just felt even for being a comedian, like, uh, especially for being comedian, pardon me, that he really should have been knocking out of the park. And I just went, God, I, I, I really hate that. You're just being, <laughs> that you're being this like, eh, about it so i was uh, admittedly i was kind of irritated by uh by him at points but for the most part he does work and then i will say to uh the lizard is just kind of there he doesn't get a lot to do until like the last battle but honestly that's fine because even in the in the films that they're originally in certain villains are focused on more uh, more uh, prominently than others and this is all about Osborne, uh, really Electro, Sandman, and then Octavius, and that's fine for working uh, for focusing more on those uh, on those four. Um, really, anything else I kind of want to talk about is getting in the spoiler territory. So I'm gonna give I'm gonna give kind of my final thoughts, and then I'll get in the full spoilers. So I will say for me, this is my who. I think I like this as much as Far From Home, which is my favorite Spider-Man uh, live action Spider-Man film. I don't like this more than Spider-Verse. It's really close. Like, and I have to stress that it is so close to being as great as Into the Spider-Verse. And I've only seen it once so far. I might go see it again on Tuesday. <laughs> but just on what I've seen so far, it, it's... It's right there. It's not quite there, but it's very close. So I'm still going to give this a fan fucking tastic. This is well worth your time. Go see us in the theater. Obviously, please, please, if you have not gotten vaccinated for fuck's sake, do that first. But this is one of those films that I'm so happy. This is a film to bring people back and to get people excited and for people to go, 
oh my god, I can't wait to be back in the theater. Uh, yeah, fuck you, Tenet. But I, <laughs> but I'm so happy that people are just loving on this movie because there's so much to love on, and I just had an absolute blast. And the reason I didn't review this Thursday night when I initially got out of the theater is because I was still so hyped. I really wanted to make sure that you know it wasn't me just going, oh my god, new Spider Man. I really wanted to to you know meditate on this a little bit and make sure that i love it as much as i do and i do it's a great fucking movie and i am just so happy that people are loving on this so it's a fan fucking tastic for me um i will say this though i don't know and i, and I really am and i'm not even saying this for like oh like stay tuned i don't know if i like this as much as the suicide squad i, I don't i'm really still kind of debating on that because the suicide squad was such a surprise i kind of expected this to be great and that might be the difference that gives suicide squad an edge but my god you want to talk about a movie that just made me weep and cry and cheer and hoot and holler and go oh my god why are you so great uh yeah this movie does that in spades and i was just so happy so fan fucking tastic for me all right now Spoilers from here on out. So if you've not seen it, turn off now. All right. You still you still with me? Okay, here we go. Oh, my God, this movie. So let's go down the list of things that I just went. I fucking love this. So I love the fact that this film establishes that Nick Fury has been off planet for quite some time. It doesn't say how long. They say at least a year. So flat out. That's clearly set up for Secret Invasion, which I love, again, Marvel setting the table. They're kind of good at that. I love the fact that they go ahead and establish that because, again, Nick Fury, of course, is setting up a sword in space, which is going to tie into Secret Invasion and lead to it. So I'm very excited to see how Secret Invasion is going to go ahead and uh, break down. The big thing or one of the big things from this movie is, oh, my God. Matt Murdock, Daredevil himself, ah, uh, avocado at law himself, Matt Murdock is back in the fucking saddle, played once again by Charlie Cox, and to say that I screamed when I saw Matt Murdock, I was like, oh my god, because that was the big swing I took even before, even when a lot of people, let's call it what it is, a lot of people thought that was Matt Murdock myself included when he's getting questioned by the F, uh, by the FBI and that was kind of disproven and a lot of people did back off on saying oh yeah uh, Matt Murdock isn't going to be in here and if you listen to my Far From Home review I flat out say Spider-Man will need a lawyer this is the perfect place they will debut Matt Murdock in the MCU in the next Spider-Man film and I am so happy I called that swing because it's only for a few minutes he gets maybe three minutes of screen time, but my God, just to know that Matt Murdock is in New York, just to know that Matt Murdock, uh, his talk with Peter Parker, just knowing that Matt Murdock and Spider-Man are are most likely going to cross paths again. Yes. Yes. Give me all of that. I'm, I'm so happy for uh, Charlie Cox that, that man, he deserves all, he deserves all the great things. I just, I love the dude. So I'm so happy he's back. But, yeah, hell yeah, so happy for him. So, a couple other things. Um, Aunt May, and, and we have to talk about this. So, one of the big things from the comics that's always been kind of a, you know, kind of a joke is that Spider-Man always pulls his punches, obviously. Because if Spider-Man punched every villain at full strength, he'd be killing a lot of fucking people. And so, I appreciate that the film flat out addresses that here. And... It really made me happy because it's such a it's, it's a thing that a lot of Spider-Man comic readers know, but I think a lot of Spider-Man readers forget. So I was really happy that they bring uh, go ahead and bring that back up. There is a fight scene between him and Norman Osborn's Green Goblin because we find out that, of course, while working with Doctor Strange, that Peter has to basically go ahead and get these villains back to their uh, to their respective uh, you know, universes, but Dr. Strange tells him that their fate, all these villains fates are to die at the hands of Spider-Man. They're Spider-Man. 
Like, there's no wiggle room on that. And so that leads to this, and I'm going to call it what it is. It's one of my favorite chase sequences. It might be my favorite chase sequence since Mad Max Fury Road, now that I think about it. Uh, this chase that they have through the mirror dimension is just, it's it's dazzling. It, it is a visual spectacle. It is a visual feast for the eyes. The more I was sitting there watching it, the more I was like, oh, my God, I can't handle this, but in the best way. And it just it feels claustrophobic like it really like should, given the fact and the circumstances of what's going on. But the way that Doctor Strange, like the aggressiveness of Doctor Strange is fascinating to watch. And it's really quite cool just to see how Peter's uh, powers work in in the in the mirror dimension and how he's able to go ahead at the end of the day in this chase and trap dr strange in a way that you go oh my god that's really he okay um love the way that scene was filmed one of the other things that i just went oh i'm so happy you addressed that Ever since the Ancient One died in Doctor Strange, we haven't had a Sorcerer Supreme. Because Doctor Strange blipped and Wong didn't, uh, by default, technically, Wong took the, uh, took the title of Sorcerer Supreme. So Wong is a Sorcerer Supreme now, which is pretty fucking awesome. So it makes sense why he was conferencing with uh, Bruce Banner and Captain Marvel at the uh, during the mid-credit scene of uh, Shang-Chi. So I love that. That's a whole fucking thing. Um, one of the other things I love, there's there a very, very subtle, uh, uh, there is a l very little subtle nod because, again, I'm a nerd. There's this point where Ned and MJ are with Peter, Doctor Strange, in the, uh, in the Sanctum. And on the wall, you'll notice that uh, Ned starts to play with a, uh, with a crossbow. But what's such a subtle thing is that the crossbow isn't filled with a crossbow. It's filled with a stake, which just is another tease of Blade is coming. Blade is here. You're getting Blade, which I, yes, give me give me all the Blade in the MCU. I am so ready for Mahershala to, I, I'm so ready for that. Um, absolutely love that little, uh, that little uh, tease there. Um, one of the other things I love, too, about this, and again, it's a blink if you miss it moment. Uh, there's this point where p the media is kind of showing, you know, uh, like news newspaper articles and uh, little clips of things uh, as far as Peter's whole trial and him being, you know, public enemy number one. And there's a very quick little thing on they show a cover of People magazine. It shows uh, uh, Liz, uh, Liz Toombs, uh, of course, Vulture's daughter. It's accompanied by the line, by the headline that he's a liar. And so when you think about the fact that Peter took, uh, you know, left Liz at her homecoming dance, uh, she she hasn't forgiven him. And while I, being someone of a purist, would love, you know, to have Felicia Hardy play Black Cat in the MCU, there's a big, there is a built in reason for Liz to go ahead and become uh, become Black Cat and try to take down Peter. It, it's it's right there. Um, the big emotional thing for me, or one of the big emotional things, is that, um, as I mentioned earlier, with One More Day, Peter uh, getting killed, uh, not Peter getting killed, but uh, Aunt May gets killed in this by the Goblin's uh, glider after a intense, insane uh, fight scene throughout this uh, this uh, this uh, studio, w which my God, I you, Peter, our Peter Parker, Holland's Peter Parker has never thrown a punch in the MCU. I'm sitting here kind of racking my brain, and I don't recall him ever throwing a punch, uh, a kick maybe, but never a punch. And so seeing him be so aggressive against Norman Osborn because he is that villain who he should be trying to punch the fuck out of. It's so cool to see Osborne in Holland's uh, Spider-Man go toe-to-toe -to -toe and to see how Aunt May gets killed by the glider. It's such a it's such a heartbreaking scene. And she even gets to drop the with great power 
uh, become, uh, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. And the moment she dropped, so I will say, and I even talked to my partner about this, and she was mad at me when I brought this up. I remember when I saw uh, Aunt May running through like kind of this debris. I think it's in the second. I think it's in the second trailer. And I remember seeing that and going, oh, she's a goner. There's no fucking way she makes it out of this because they showed MJ falling. And when they showed MJ falling, I went, okay, so I I, I, I even told her, I was like, I can totally see where this is going to go. MJ is falling. Holland's Peter tries to go ahead and save her. Goblin's uh, glider knocks him off course. And then someone else is going to have to save her. And... Spoiler alert, that's exactly what happened. So, but seeing Aunt May die was one of those things I just went, son of a bitch, this really, this really, this hits me. And that's compounded by the fact that the cops show up, or the, uh, the, the I think it's the, F- it's the FBI or the DOC. Um, I, yeah, anyways, they have guns. And they go ahead and just open fire on this teenager like a bunch of assholes in a way that I just went god damn guys like that's cool um but I love the way that scene is done because it flashes to uh, Happy Hogan in in his car and of course we know uh Happy and Aunt May had a summer fling and so Happy pulls up in time just just in time to see Peter holding uh, Aunt May's body in his arms, and it's just the most heartbreaking reaction from from a happy it, and great acting from Favreau, who I know we give him all the love as a uh, writer and as a uh, director, but goddamn, he's a hell of an actor too. And you just your heart just breaks for him. And of course, since I brought up MJ, I can bring up the fact that we get we get Tom Holland to go ahead. He's joined by Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker from the Amazing Spider-Man universe, and we get fucking Tobey Maguire back in the Spider-Man suit, looking like the coolest youth pastor, which is one of the best jokes in this movie, and I'm so happy that Andrew Garfield got that. But this movie really is just overall a celebration of the character, and seeing three generations of Spider-Men on screen Let's call it what it is. I, I've i talked about this in, in my reviews uh, for the films. My problem with the Amazing Spider-Man films was never Andrew Garfield. It's really quite ironic that Andrew Garfield's career got way better <laughs> after the Amazing Spider-Man films. Because after those movies, he goes ahead and ends up doing, uh, you know, does Hacksaw Ridge. Does Tick Tick Boom, which I have not reviewed yet, but is wonderful. He does uh, Under Under the Silver Lake. He does Silence. Uh, works with fucking Scorsese. Uh, he does this movie called Ninety Nine Homes with uh, with uh, Michael Shannon, which if you have not seen, you need to see that movie. But yeah, uh, Garfield is one of the best actors we have, and I was so happy for him to get to come back and really put a stamp on his version of Spider-Man in a way that the other, the other films never let him do. And I was just, I was just happy for him. And it just warms my heart that, uh, it just warms my heart to see that. And honestly, my big thing for him too, is that (sighs) he looks so happy to be there. Like, Holland is clearly happy to be there. I'm sure Maguire, or, uh, yeah, I'm sure Maguire is just happy with the check. But <laughs> Andrew Garfield is like, I get another chance to do this and do this right. It's really similar to Brandon Routh coming back uh, in the uh, Crisis on uh, Infinite Earths event uh, for uh, for CW, where, you know, he got a lot of shit for being Superman. He comes back, though, in that event and fucking crushes it. And I think Garfield here, he has the charm I want from Peter Parker. He's very witty. Um, the way that he web slings and everything, the, the quips that all three Spider-Men have, because, you know, Peter Parker is quippy. That's kind of one of his things. I just, I was sitting there going, my heart is so warm right now, and I just love that all of this is happening right now. And it's one of those things that really did make me happy as I'm sitting there watching the movie. It just, just really warmed my fucking heart. Um, 
trying to think of what uh, oh god because there's there's a lot there's a lot in this here um the way tom holland web swings is straight up out of uh the spider-man ps4 games like it's not even it's not even close like they're clearly going for that as well they should there's even a point where holland does this move where he webs himself to the ceiling so he can do a flip and then webs the floor to go ahead and crash down on the Green Goblin. And they go down uh, like one or two floors, uh, Mortal Kombat style. And it's it's straight up a finishing move for, or a signature move from the Spider-Man PS4 game, which I fucking love that they're incorporating uh, that stuff into you know these films. Where this film leaves off in particular is something that I just went... This is incredibly bold because I've always said, I have always said that Marvel, Papa, Papa Feige, they always have a plan over there. And the fact of the matter is uh, the multiverse is crashing and folding within itself. Granted, you know, Scarlet Witch will probably do that anyway. Thanks, Wanda. But it's folding within itself in this movie. And so Doctor Strange casts a spell so that everyone forgets who uh peter parker is so everyone knows that spider-man exists but no one knows who peter parker is so he is really starting over from jump to go ahead and um to go ahead and reestablish these relationships and it's fucking sad honestly and you just you you watch dr strange even cast a spell and you just go fuck this is th- this is gonna just reset everything like peter's life is getting so much worse and honestly peter's life ends in a worse state like he's in a worse spot than when he starts this movie and in that way it's incredibly fucking tragic you're like oh no this this poor kid but it gets us because i know one of the big complaints that people always had was Oh my God! Why is he using Stark tech? Oh my God! Why is he using? Why is he helping Tony Stark? Blah 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 blah. And honestly, for me, I would rather have Stark be a huge influence on him than Uncle Ben. Like we've seen the Uncle Ben shit enough times. It's nice to actually mix shit up a little bit. And so him revering Tony as a scientist and as an inventor, and as, you know, all these other things, it totally makes sense, but we get, this movie ends up with Peter in an apartment by himself, and the fact of the matter is, we are now kind of at that Spider-Man prime now, it really ends with Peter by himself, he's made his own suit that looks so much like the the old school Ditko's uh, Ditko suit that it made me really happy. And we only get a glimpse of it, so they can easily start off with that new suit uh, for the next, uh, you know, for whatever Spider Man Four will be. Um, and they should start off with that, by the way. But I love so much that we're now at this point where we're gonna have a Peter Parker that's struggling financially. We have a Peter Parker who doesn't have his uncle ben or his aunt may we have a peter parker who doesn't have anyone it's really just he himself and you know him um and it really it, it's tragic but the multitude of stories it allows us to tell potentially i think we're getting craven's last hunt with uh with tom holland i think that's coming i think we're getting him mentoring miles morales by the sixth film where i think they will kill holland's peter uh peter parker off you heard it here first i believe that we're getting black cat introduced in the next film i'm calling that right now um they flat out show that ned has magic tendencies he's able to open portals uh he does become the hobgoblin in uh in in the comics so i think that's a very real possibility that they are setting up and then uh i think the main villain for the next film just because the character has become extremely popular and with aunt may working at feast it feels like a no-brainer i think mr negative mr negative is coming i think that's exactly what we're getting or if he's not the main villain he'll be like villain number two in Spider-Man 4. And I I would love to see uh Mr. Negative in the MCU. I, I think he'd be 
fucking badass. So yeah, give me Mr. Negative. But uh, to wrap this all up, y'all, um, I think I'm going to talk about the Doctor Strange uh, uh, Multiverse of Madness trailer or Sizzle Reel kind of as a separate thing. Um, they do set up Vi- uh, Venom uh, as well coming to New York. So maybe we get a-, a Maximum Carnage film. Maybe that's where we're, maybe we get one of those too. I mean, there's a lot of ways and directions that they could take this. Clearly, we're going to get Hardy's Venom against Holland Spider-Man. They're cl- we're clearly getting that. But I am just, I'm so excited for the future of this franchise. I'm so happy they were able to convince Holland, uh, not Holland, but uh, Garfield and uh, McGuire to come back. Uh, I- I'm really happy for Andrew Garfield. As happy as I am for everyone in this movie, I'm probably the most happy for Andrew Garfield because he got a lot of unnecessary shit. And it's amazing. Like it, this proves he could have been a great Spider-Man if he's just had the right fucking script. And that makes me really happy for him. Cause I'm sure that's something that he's wrestled with, but hopefully he's found peace with this, but fan fucking tastic. Go see this movie. It made over $500 million already worldwide, which again, take that to it. But I am just so <coughs> pardon me. I am so happy for this film. I'm so happy people are digging on it. I can't wait to go see it again myself. But yeah, this is just an absolute, absolute blast. But Spider-Man, No Way Home, what did you guys think of it? Let us know in the comments. You can follow yours truly on the Twitter at jhunterrealpineapple. You can follow Scott on Twitter at Nearman the First. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can check us out on SoundCloud. Ah, oh, pardon me. Uh, Apple and Google Podcasts, Podbean, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Amazon Music, to name a few spots at The Real Pineapple. And, <coughs> pardon me, don't forget to like both our pages on Facebook at The Real Pineapple and Real Pineapple Games. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. We'll have reviews up here soon for uh, The Tragedy of Mick. Beth, uh, we'll have reviews up for King Richard, um, along with some other, uh, ho- I'm finally going to get going on Holly stuff here this week. Uh, like I said, it's been, it's been a month, but, uh, everyone, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your continued support. We love y'all stay safe out there. Get your booster shot, wear a mask, take care of each other, and we'll talk to you soon. Happy holidays.